So, so okay, so I've been yammering on now for, for almost 20 minutes about inflation and interest rates and why they're so important. But what does it, what does it actually do to you as our client? Um, I think the number one thing that it does is it, it impacts bonds. And, it, and it's, it's tough because if you're in the stock market, as a, quite frankly, as a client of mine, um, maybe Bob or Rob or Elliot you know, will talk to you differently if, you, if anyone works with them. But if a client of mine comes in and says, the market's down 20, and let's say we're down 17, and we're down 17, and I'm all upset, honestly, I'm not really listening. Because you're in the stock market, you knew the risks, we have this as a long-term plan, and the market goes down sometimes. The, the, the conservative people, though, are in bonds. And when interest rates go up, bonds go down. I'm not going to spend, I'll spend a little bit of time on that relationship in a minute. But we literally just had the worst quarter for bonds. And bonds is what retired people and old ladies live on. Um, and that is tough. And I can tell you, like, emotionally, it's been difficult for me as, a, as, a, as an advisor. Because you, you go into them as something that's going to be conservative and interest rates skyrocket historically, right, more than they ever have. And it, and it creates the worst quarter ever for bonds. Um, again, we'll talk about that in, you know, a little bit more in a little bit. But um, how, kind of how and why that impacts you is bond relationships work inversely. So as interest rates go up, which they did historically in the first quarter, that drives bonds down. What I think is important as clients to realize, though, whether you have bonds with us or, or in your 401k maybe or, or somewhere else, that when you buy a bond initially from an issuer, those bonds come out at $1,000 per. They also mature at $1,000 at some specific point in the future. The average client's bond in our portfolio or the duration kind of the average of all their bonds is about five and a half years. So meaning in five and a half years, all these bonds are gonna mature. Well, they're gonna mature at $1,000. It's it's, unless the company goes out of business, it is a mathematical certainty that the bonds will kind of catch up to what's called par value, will catch up to par. Um, bonds right now are an average of about $93, so which means 930. Well, they're gonna mature at 1,000. So what is what has been bad is this quarter, like if you're retired and you're living on a fixed income and we have to sell bonds every month, you're selling bonds that are down 7% and that's that's historically low, right? Like that, is, we've never lost 7% of bonds in a quarter. Um, the upside of that is, is because of the way bonds work, it's not like the stock market where it might just stay down for a decade. Um, that can't happen mathematically with bonds. So those bonds, and again, unless the company, the issuer goes out of business, but those bonds will mature at par value, right? That, that we know. So not only will you earn whatever interest rate you already had on those bonds, but you will also earn a little bit, maybe one to one and a half percent of premium or discount destruction premium, whatever you want to call it, as you go from 930 back up to 1,000. So, so those bonds work inversely. The example I always give is if you had a bond that's five years old and it's paying 2% and you could get one today at 4%, which do you like better? Right, that answers the 4% one, right? Which means the 2% one, no one wants. And if, some, if you own something that no one wants, you have to put it on sale. And that's basically what happens with bonds. Now that is a 20 second explanation of an entire course in undergraduate business school. Um, but that's basically it, right? If new bonds are paying a higher interest rate, Old bonds, not as valuable, no one wants them, you have to discount them. Although those discounts erode as they move closer and closer and closer to the day that they mature, which they mature at a thousand. Um, so the downside is we had the worst quarter for bonds in the history of the United States of America in the first quarter. The upside is bonds look really good for the next couple of years um, because, there's, because of just how the math works. There's just not a lot of downside left. And, and we know now it's gonna have to go from 930 back up to a thousand. Um, the other upside is in about the last three weeks-ish, bonds are starting to act like bonds. In the first quarter, again, that's why I had that train wreck picture, bonds and stocks both went down 10%, um, give or take. So bonds a little bit less. But the, when you have both going down, that's very scary for clients and it's hard for advisors. Rebalancing becomes less valuable. Um, what we're going to sell to do something like live on a monthly basis becomes more difficult because kind of everything's down. Um, so it becomes much more difficult to manage it, whether it's whether you're a financial advisor, whether you're um, you know, a do-it-yourselfer or whoever's managing money, it becomes more difficult. Lately, bonds have been working like they should, meaning when the stock market goes up, right, bonds come down a little bit. And when the stock market goes down, people freak out and buy bonds and they go up. A bit. And that relationship is healthy and it makes it um, a little bit easier for us to manage too. Uh, which I think is a huge advantage, you know, advantage for you as clients. So they're, they're kind of acting like the cushion that they're supposed to instead of 
going down with the stock market. By the way, it's only happened three times in the last 60 years, 08 and, and now, you know, the first quarter were, were two of those times. Um, again, here's the deep discount to par. I kind of already talked about that. So um, again, you can see right here that it's at, uh, it's at $93, cursor's uh, right there. So they're at all at about 93, which means 930 out of a thousand. Um, so as, as those kind of go back up, right? That's a, that's a, that's math, right? That's just a mathematical formula that says it might not be linear. It might not be exactly one and a half percent every year. You know, you might get flat for a year and 3% when you're in flat for, you know, half a percent when you're in two and a half the next year, but it'll get back to a thousand, uh, which I think is, is nice for people who have suffered a little bit in bonds because that's that I, I think has been the hardest part. 